there was all the unpleasantness of the divorce. It's not the ending of a relationship you miss, it's the money. Sometimes there's an old film in the afternoon. When you've been married to a woman for 25 years, the last thing you want to see is her walking off with your money. Will you stop it with that damn switch? Cyril, don't raise your voice. We've got cooks in it. Anyway, it only makes your dentures click. <laughs> <laughs> They're beautiful, really. Cost him a fortune. The sissy can't handle them yet when he gets excited. Yeah. Get yourself outside those, lads. Why don't you go and do something in the kitchen? They don't want to hear about my teeth. She's trying to get me started doing things in the kitchen. <laughs> Sometimes she spends hours in there painting her nails. <laughs> Great nails. I don't know why men always want to get you in the kitchen. <laughs> You made me buy you that <coughs> damn great glossy split-level fitted kitchen. Cyril, if you are going to object because I like nice things, I'm going to be very disappointed in you. You're going to be disappointed. You nagged me for that kitchen. I thought you were going to do something with it. I am going to do something with it. I'm going to get a firm in to move the oven to the other side of the window. <laughs> What's wrong with it where it is? I take it very unkindly of you, Cyril Butterfield, to interfere in the daily running of a lady's kitchen. Do I tell you how to run your amusement? I'll be back in a minute, lads. <laughs> Cyril's really quite sweet and working very hard to get rid of an unsightly roll of fat around his stomach. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in love. Simmer down. Don't start your uniform smouldering. <laughs> that is my kind of woman. Yeah, you say that every time. I'm going to sweep her off her feet. She'll eat you alive, will not. I'm going to knock her dead. <laughs> now, let me pull those up. Oh, no, thank you, Mrs. Butterfield. We have to be on our way. Oh, call me Liz. <laughs> oh, Liz. <laughs> you mustn't call me Mrs. Butterfield. I hear someone calling Mrs. Butterfield, and I'm looking round to see who it is. Are you sure about that drink? Oh, quite sure, thank you. <laughs> Well, I suppose you police boys have to keep your wits about you. Well, it helps to be razor sharp. <laughs> it must be very dangerous these days. Well, someone's got to do it, love. Yeah, excuse me. <clears throat> Just remember, if you should need me, I'll be out there on the streets. Oh. <laughs> All you've got to do is whistle. <laughs> I'm sure. Just remember, if you need me, shut up. Be out there on the street. She likes me, I could tell. All you have to do is whistle. <laughs> what I've got to do now is work out my next moves. Actually, all she has to do is dial 999. Get myself a new suit. Start with a new shirt or something. See how it goes. How it goes? I'll tell you how it's going to go. Kaboom! <laughs> this is it, Rosie. This is the big one. The big one's right. She's about eight foot tall. <laughs> a technicality. Anyway, if things work out, I shall be keeping her off her feet quite a lot. <laughs> hey, why don't we drive past her place and I'll give her a wave? We've only just left. That's true. Let her sweat it out a bit. Keep her in turmoil, wondering when I'm coming back. I wish she'd come back down to earth. You go, Rosie. I've got some thinking to do. Why don't you leave me here? Let me get my head straight. Because we're on duty, Wilmot. That's true. Can't argue against that. I'm a policeman first, and a private human being second. Excuse me. Could you tell me how to get to Sam Gatron? Not now, not now. <laughs> it won't work! Give it a try. I can't see what they can do to my hair that's going to make all that difference. He's still going to know it's me. Well, of course he's going to know it's you. You want him to know it's you. You still want to be you, don't you? Before I answer that.
that could I see what else they've got? <laughs> Brenda, all you need is a little more confidence. Then I'd no longer be awkward old stodgy old me. Right. I'd be confident old stodgy old me. Look, you're just not doing the best with what you've got. And as a consequence, nobody else is doing very much with it either. And a new hairdo is going to alter that. It's a beginning. Let's pause for a moment and consider the purpose of the operation. The target, the goal. Well, not. Right. I mean, it's not as though we've got to remodel you for Paul Newman now, is it? I mean, with Wilmot as your target, you can hardly be accused of setting your sights too high. You've got to admire his style. Well, just because he looks like him, he's damned if he's going to finish up with something that looks like me. <laughs> oh! wrong what's wrong nothing's wrong you're not feeling nauseous why should I be feeling nauseous just an idea not a great idea but then it's been a long day I don't know why you should think I was feeling nauseous if I was feeling anything at all I'm down to earth enough to feel just plain sick <laughs> <laughs> If you're not feeling nauseous, why are you pulling those faces? What faces? Every time I look up, you're going... <laughs> or, uh... Or even... <laughs> hey, I see you're doing it again! Ah. I've just got something on my mind, that's all. You're not hungry again. No, I am not hungry again. <laughs> well, I am hungry again, but that's not it. What do you think about Brown? Well, Mark, what kind of a question is what do you think about Brown? How can anybody answer a question like what do you think about Brown? For a suit. A new two-piece suit. I don't know, maybe a new three-piece suit. Brown. Do you think it'll uh, go with my hair? If it was falling to pieces, it would go with your hair. <laughs> I'm not joking, Rosie. I'm serious. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm thinking of getting some new threads. Once I've got rid of this unsightly roll of fat round my stomach. <laughs> Big Cyril's wife. You're still freaked on Big Cyril's wife. She knew she's magic. You said that about that bird on the pumps at the Filey garage. <laughs> no comparison. You thought so one time when you were standing there pouring petrol down your leg. <laughs> You're going out. How do you do it, Mother? How do you manage to make that simple statement sound like an accusation? Oh, you're going out. I'm sorry I spoke. I didn't realize you were in a dramatic mood. I'm in a dramatic mood. What about, oh, you're going out? Makes it sound as if I'm abandoning a wife and 14 kids to go slurping off around the flesh pots all night in search of unnatural vice. <laughs> <laughs> You'd better take your overcoat if you're going to be late. I do not like indelicate talk, dear. Say something to him, Norman. Well, personally, I have no strong prejudices either for or against indelicate talk. Norman! I merely offered an observation. In the regimental mess during the war, one heard a good deal of indelicate talk. Didn't seem to do any harm. We won. <laughs> go and see to the fire in the living room, Norman. There's nothing I'd rather do either than go and see to the fire in the living room. And don't get soot on your pullover. Are you feeding him differently? <laughs> Same as always. You shouldn't push him around between you like an object. 
He's not just my Uncle Norman, your husband and gardener, and your general handyman chauffeur and brother-in-law. He's a human being. <coughs> Are you really planning to wear that tie with that suit? When I say it didn't do us any harm, several of our chaps were killed quite messily. But that was the war I always felt, rather than any direct result of our indelicate talk. <laughs> Go to your room, Norman. <laughs> <laughs> In reply to your earlier question, Mother, yes, I am going to wear this tie with this suit. I'm always going to wear this tie with this suit. <laughs> I thought we were going for a meal. Later. In the meantime, if you want something to nibble, try my ear. <laughs> You're up to something. And why this pub? This is Wilmot's pub. I've seen quite enough of Wilmot for one day. How is he? Weird. It's not good for a man being alone. He's not alone. I'm stuck with him. And he's getting weirder. It's time he stopped brooding about his wife leaving him. Believe me, he stopped. I mean, if he looked at the situation rationally, he ought to recognise that being what he is, she was bound to leave him. What he ought to start thinking about now is another woman. Oh, he's thinking, he's thinking. What he wants is some good, solid, down-to-earth female who'll give him a good home. No, what he wants is some big, fresh, gorgeous creature and to hell with a good home. <laughs> the trouble's going to be trying to convince him that all he's going to get is some good, solid, down-to-earth female who's going to give him a good home. Surely he'll settle for a good home. With his personality, he's going to have to settle for a good home. <laughs> You're getting very cynical. It's time we got married so we can fight about these things properly. Now, ah, joking apart, where are we going to find this good, solid, down-to-earth female who's keen to give Wilma a home? Oh. <laughs> Brenda! Hello, Rosie. You look great. You look great. He's going to hate it. I know he's going to hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Go and enjoy yourself. Oh, no.